Although they started this year with their 8 core and 12 core models, looks like AMD decided to give Intel 3 months to pull out their trump cards, that is, if they have any. Times have changed and AMD has finally established itself as a company that dictates the current trends and no longer tries to catch up to the competition. After a few months of waiting, we finally have the Ryzen 9 3950X in our hand, which is the strongest desktop version of the new Ryzen CPUs. It comes with a maximum configuration of two physical chipsets, each with eight physical cores, which gives you a total of 16 physical cores capable of executing 32 simultaneous threads. Those 16 cores share 64 megabytes of level 3 cache, while the processor has a total of 73 megabytes of memory for data caching. The Ryzen 9 3950X has the base frequency of 3.5 GHz and reaches a maximum turbo frequency of 4.7 GHz, which is achieved by individual cores. Needless to say that to make the most of it, you also need a fast RAM memory as well. Optimal choice would be DDR4 at 3600 MHz with lowest possible latency. With fast enough RAM, the R9 3950X is ready to tackle the more powerful Intel LGA 2066 and AMD Threadripper CPU models, surpassing all previous models in its class. This kind of performance is achieved by the advanced 7 nanometer transistor design process, reducing the thermal design power to 105 watts. This Ryzen comes without a factory cooler and is also recommended to use a water cooling system. The better your cooling is, the better the performance. Now, the cooling system is extremely important for the 3950X because this processor also uses XFR2 or Extend Frequency Range 2 and Power Boost Overdrive Auto Overclocking techniques. Our first impression showed an abundance of power and brutal speed. Temperature and power consumption did not pose a problem as one would expect given the behavior of the models with the fewer physical cores. To make sure that we get most of our Ryzen 9 3950X, we have upgraded our test motherboard to the latest and recommended BIOS version with an active AGISA 1004 code, which guarantees maximum performance. On top of that, we used our reference cooler master Neptune 280L all-in-one water cooling system. Our choice of RAM were the excellent G-Skill Trident Z Neo 3600 modules that have been optimized for the AMD Ryzen platform. A little performance tip, make sure to use 4 memory modules as you will get few additional percents on top. The effect is similar to using RAM modules with a dual RAM configuration, which is why Ryzen additionally benefits from the so-called memory interleaving. After we installed everything properly, we have to address another hot topic. The power plant profile that also affects CPU's ability to attain and maintain maximum operating frequencies. Some claims have emerged on the internet that certain settings of optimized power plant profiles can raise the average frequency by up to 200 MHz. We checked and saw no gains in real-world performance. We actually even noticed a slowdown compared to the traditional AMD high-performance profile. So, our advice for getting the maximum performance is to update the AGISA code, set the RAM to 3600 MHz if possible, and Infinity Fabric bus to 1800 MHz. Then, load the AMD chipset drivers and activate the AMD high performance profile. Additionally, make sure that Windows 10 OS is updated to 1903 or 1909 versions, which are able to recognize and aggressively speed up faster processor cores, so make sure to use some good cooling system. So, what can we expect in terms of performance? The rated 4.7 GHz seem quite respectable, but a bit improbable when we consider the max frequencies of other Ryzen 3000 CPUs. Real use scenarios confirm that this is more of a marketing highlight than an actual usable frequency. 4.7 GHz is reached only for a split second to fulfill that promise, but don't get your hopes up that the CPU is going to operate at that frequency for an extended period. Realistically, 3950X is the same as the, all of the third generation Ryzen models, which means that a full load, all cores will run at around 4 GHz. But bear in mind that this time around you have 16 physical cores at your disposal, which is a respectable achievement that we have to give props for to AMD. At full load, running applications that use all of its available resources, the Ryzen 9 3950X consumes about 173 watts of power and reaches the maximum operating temperature of 76 degrees Celsius, all while keeping the 4 GHz operating frequency. Now, the burning question we all have, how much faster is it than the 8-core Ryzen and Intel Core CPUs? 
Well, rendering applications as expected can reap the most benefits from such a high computing power. Therefore, performance gains in this type of software is most obvious and this CPU will be the most sensible choice for people who use this kind of software. So, Autodesk Maya with Arnold Renderer module renders almost 2.5 times faster on Ryzen 3950X than on Intel Core i9-9900K, which is an advantage of 239%. It is also nearly three times faster than the Core i7-9700K, or 298% to be exact. At the same time, the 8-core Ryzen is expectedly about two times slower, meaning that the Zen 2 scales performance almost perfectly. The 12-core Zen 2 CPU performs 33% slower, which is not negligible for someone who makes a living doing rendering. The similar results were shown while testing the Cinema 4D program that gives the strongest Ryzen twice the advantage over the strongest Core i9-9900K, or 2.5 times compared to the Core i7-9700K processor. Zen 2's with 8 cores is 86% behind, while the 12 core version is lagging for 25%. It is almost safe to say that even in the most demanding scenario, the Ryzen 9 3950X is brutally overpowered and the result speaks for themselves. The pattern of behavior is also encountered while using Blender or Keyshot. So rendering and 3D modeling is the right environment that can make most of the computing power of the Ryzen 9 3950X at the moment. When it comes to popular multimedia tasks, such as video processing, the strongest Ryzen 3000 series still shines, but not to the extent we saw with the previous application category. For example, in Adobe Premiere, the advantage over 8-core Zen 2 is 23%, while most popular 6-core models were just over 40% behind. In After Effects, the difference is even smaller, with 8% and 7% respectively in favor of the R9 3950X. In Photoshop, the R9 3950X is faster than its weaker Zen 2 cousins by just under 1%, practically making no difference in real-time use. When it comes to archiving, the R9 3950X is about 50% faster than the strongest 8-core Intel Core and AMD Zen 2 CPUs. While converting FLAC to MP3 music formats, it scores close to 40% better than the strongest Intel Core i9-9900K processor and is twice as fast as the Core i7-9700K model, while the Ryzen 7 3700X is behind by 30% and Ryzen 9 3900X by 9%. As you can see, the performance difference varies depending on how well a specific application is optimized to take the advantage of all of the available CPU cores. As for the games, you certainly don't buy this kind of a processor model for gaming, although hardware manufacturer PR departments are also happy to mention it whenever they can. The truth is that R9 3950X shows minimal performance improvement over other Ryzen 3000 processors, so you'd only be wasting money buying it for gaming alone. You may get a couple of extra frames in titles that just use CPU power like Assassin's Creed franchise or the Far Cry 5 title. In the rest of the games you don't get any performance gains. One of the novelties of the R9 3950X processor is the Ryzen Eco mode. It works only in conjunction with the board based on the AMD X570 chipset. It is an interesting idea and new options with the Ryzen Master Tool. This function is intended for users who would like to put a powerful CPU in a compact ITX system. Activating this mode reduces power consumption from an average of 105 watts to 65 watts. And the performance level it delivers in such situations is still above 77% of the maximum measured level. When it comes to overclocking, when you consider that this is a 16-core processor, and you gotta wonder if it's even possible or sustainable for everyday use. However, if you have a good cooling system and a board with a high-quality VRM module, you can certainly try, just like we did. After a few tries, we got the hang of it on the ASRock X570 Taiichi board. First, we got into the OC menu and set the core voltage to 1.281 volts. Voltage mode is then switched to overclocking mode. We then set the load line calibration to a value of 1 to prevent any voltage oscillations when the processor starts with intensive calculations and increased consumption. We raise the frequency of the processor first to 4.1 GHz, then to 4.2 GHz, and finally stable 4.3 GHz. 
We didn't tune the RAM, it stayed at 3600 MHz CL16, while FCLK was set to 1800 MHz. The performance gained by overclocking measured in about 8 or 9%, while the power consumption exceeded the 200 watt limit and the temperature goes up to 96 degrees Celsius, even with the system outside of the case. Was it worth the risk? Honestly, I think it's better to just leave the factory values for everyday use than to force the system unnecessarily. Maybe if you really need performance boost to do something fast, you can try overclocking, but make sure to monitor the machine while you're at it. The Ryzen 9 3950X is the world's first desktop mainstream 16-core CPU. Practically, the first of its kind, it gives you the power of a high-end workstation systems on a regular PC, marking a new era of PC computing. However, it is a specific tool that demonstrates its full power at specialized tasks like 3D rendering and modeling. Though it is fast in applications like video production, we can't really say that they use the full capabilities of this 16-core CPU. The question remains, who should buy a processor like this one? Certainly not an average user or a gamer, but if you're a professional who values his time and this CPU can save it, then this is certainly worth the purchase. Priced at 750 euros or roughly 830 US dollars, combined with a solid motherboard and plenty of memory, the overall cost of such platform doesn't seem too much when compared to similar workstation configuration, where the motherboard alone often costs almost as much as this Zen 2. Well, performance-wise, it certainly steps into the category of price of Threadripper and Intel Core LGA 2066 platforms. I hope that you enjoyed our presentation of the strongest third generation Ryzen model. In order to stay up to date with the latest PC hardware, be sure to subscribe to our channel. My name is Marco, you are watching another Benchhouse review.